Hello all and welcome to the channel all about economic board games. So today I am reviewing the kind of last a month's activity, almost like the life of an economic board gamer. So hopefully I'll give you some, you know, upcoming game releases, thoughts and opinions on games I've played and what I've been up to. And equally, if you've got any questions or you want to know anything more on what I play, then feel free to head over to the comments, ask me some questions. And I'm hoping in the future to bring this content to live streaming once I've figured out all the intricacies of that which would be really great to sort of engage with you guys more and bring you up to date on all that economic goodness. So what have we got first then? I've recently brought you guys my top 10 anticipated games of 2024 and we're probably going to see gradually throughout the year more games being added and I've already seen two more games which probably would have featured in that top 10. So what have we got then? We have got Foundations of Metropolis which sounds very familiar and it is because it's a re-implementation of Foundations of Rome. A, a massive sprawling a game that previous one back in 2021 and I've still yet to try it mainly because it's hard to find and probably very pricey to purchase as well so it's such a fabulous production and kind of it is an economic game but the Rome aspect just puts me off slightly so this metropolis one then creating the city of your dreams in this elegant and intuitive city building game now it's pretty much the same game but with poly omino pieces and a brand new theme so hopefully it can be at a sort of better pricing point and more attainable for myself and most of you guys so we can actually get a game in this one and maybe own a copy and I definitely like the more economic theme slapped on top of this one for sure. Now the next game which would have absolutely been in my top 10 is from the guys who brought us the smartphone ink games and this one's called Factory Ink, a smartphone ink game. So it's almost the third in the series here and this one you are at this time leading your electronic factory to success. So there's not a fat lot on this one, there's no images, but what do we got then? So you're a director of a new electronic factory and your goal is to make your factory a prosper but hunter. Uh, you're hunting for new contracts as well and you're launching product lines and making space for more and more equipment on your factory floor and I really enjoy mobile markets and smartphone ink they offer you that solo vibe I particularly like the first one for that whole global you know dominance and fighting over market share and, and the battle to sell these phones and there's some really interesting twists there I certainly like mobile markets solo as well so there's lots to like them they're slightly different from most games in your collection there's not many games all about sort of phones and technology and, 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 and how you manipulate these and, and certainly the decision process over those player boards as, as you're making your executive decisions as to how much am I going to spend on marketing or you know get new technologies and, and, and produce so really nice aspect to this and this one says it's got a unique combination of contracts, player characters and optimization cards and it's mixing up the the those action choices it says so yeah looking forward to that one it does say one to four 60 to 90 minutes so yeah another solo option they've done such a good job of the previous game so this one i am excited to see more on so next up then this has almost been this well i could almost describe the last month of gaming for me as the big month of solo games so i've just played so many games solo and purposely i've tried to play games that are a little bit more complex a little bit more out of my comfort zone because typically I play solo games a lot, but they tend to have less admin and, and, and less complexities. And I've gone in heavy this month. And the first one I've had a lot of fun playing with, which was a recommendation by one of my subscribers, was the Mortoma for Food Chain Magnate. Now, I wasn't even aware that there was a solo option for this game. So, yeah, printed the rules off. There's a few bits to, to, to print off and, and cards and sheets, but, you know, four or five pages of A4 and you are done. Cut them out and you're good to go. Now, obviously, you need the original version as well. Now, this game is definitely and still is an absolute uh, beast and a joy to play with multiplayer. And I'd play any day multiplayer. But as an option to kind of, you know, if you've got an evening free and you just want to try out some strategies and just you know get it off the shelf and give it a go, this works. And it offers me kind of what I've just said, an option to try out different strategies. It's not giving me 
you know, a real strategic uh, vibe of what multiplayer can offer me because it, that is very difficult to achieve. In this version, the supply will fluctuate based on what the Mortoma will attain and the prices will fluctuate as well depending on that supply and they will inevitably have a freezer for each item which is really powerful for them and you can see on the card here as well how when you reveal a card after your 9 to 5 so you're always first in initiative they are either going to take you can see where it says number 3 here take some burgers, coat sometimes you're going to be placing houses out onto certain spots of the board it's quite straightforward with rotating them anti-clockwise and figuring out where is acceptable to put these houses but you are trying to just outdo them you know before they start escalating and selling everything because they will they will get to a point where they're producing so much food and if you allow them just a snippet of access to certain houses especially double revenue you're going to lose so there is a nice challenge aspect to this for sure now you're definitely playing differently to a multiplayer game. And the marketing campaign is for sure, well, very different in, in terms of they are very proactive. They are marketing most terms, turns and you're going to have a lot of produce out on the board there. Whereas I felt I'm trying to catch up and I'm trying to uh, piggyback on what they have uh, marketed and produce more goods and, and sell to what they've marketed. Whereas typically... In a multiplayer game, everyone's usually contributing to marketing and you're having to proactively, you know, market to your houses because no one else probably will unless you're playing, you know, real higher player counts. So that was a slight variation from me. And the cleanup phase is brutal. They are grabbing these milestones left, right and center. And because you reveal this card after you've done your nine to five, you're then sitting there going, ah, I've missed out on the freezer or I've missed out on the waitress. So... I like it, folks, and I'm really hoping to bring you a solo playthrough on this one very uh, soon. So the next a beast of a game I tried a solo, which is just behind me, was a Nucleum. Now, I absolutely adore this game, multiplayer, I've had a blast, and I just thought, I'm going to give it a go solo. Why not? It's sitting there on the shelf. I want to play it more, and I gave it a go. So, you know, a few hours learning the rules, a few hours watching other content producers and seeing how this one flows. And it's pretty straightforward, you know, there is a lot of admin to it, but, you know, the, the rules are well done, and the back of the rule book has a really fluent guide as to what this action does for the, uh, the Baron in this case. I got it down, obviously it's a big old game, there's a lot of setup, played about an hour, and I thought, I... I'm done, folks. You know, if you watch my channel, you'll know I typically like games with, with, with less admin and, and the bots and AI, you know, having minimal things to do. This one certainly is on the heavier side and it all made sense in terms of what I needed to do and it's very clear and the symbology is fluent. But in terms of actually doing it, it just took my attention away from me. So, for example, I'm doing my go. Done. I know what I'm doing. Then I go to the bar and, right, roll the dice, pick the action. Can And you follow this kind of like flow chart. Can they place it down as a rail action? Or, well, a rail uh, tile on the board. Yes, they can. Okay, does that colour match up to here? Yes, there's two locations. Right, flip a card. Which is priority order? Right, highest. It's that number. Okay, it goes there. And then I'm looking at the actions they need to do. Right, do these several checks, uh, they need to put this urbanised, put this mine out, where's it going to go? Okay, next to a network, it needs to be close to one of yours, okay, it's a fan. So there's just a lot of checks to do, and by the time I completed the Baron, it was back around to my turn, I'm like, what am I doing now? I've completely forgotten, okay, I'm doing this, right, my go's done in about 10 seconds, and then it's over to the Baron again, I'm rolling the dice, right, do they need to do this? Yep, yeah, okay, order that. And it just took a lot of effort. And I definitely think after two free plays, uh, you will definitely understand and appreciate what the AI is most likely to do. It'll be more intuitive. But it's a big old learning curve, so you're going to have to get through that. And I think if you like games like maybe Carnegie, where you know there's a lot of admin to, to think about, then this may be your cup of tea. For me, the juice was not worth the squeeze. Well, certainly when I can go and play Food Chain Magnet, which I've been playing a lot, that is my preferred. Now, the actual solo in Nucleum has been done really well. It's all structured nicely. It all makes sense. It's just you need to be uh, willing to put in the time to, to learn this big old learning curve, as I said, and just be patient with it and understand the checks and go through it methodically to make sure it, it's smoothly. But for me, 
it's purely a multiplayer game. Okay, next I have given a go, Crude the Oil Game. Now, this isn't technically a solo game, but I've manipulated the rules slightly to uh, reenact what opponents would do, and neighbors are called in the game with just the dice roll. And I've changed how certain dice and the variances manipulate the foreign and the domestic market. But essentially, if you want a game about oil, being a tycoon, and you are producing oil, you're trying to refine it, you're trying to sell it to these markets, make the most money, and just kind of sit there and you're building your infrastructure, you're determining what to build when, based on the economy and how profitable it is then, and you know, to make the most money essentially, you can play this under an hour. Now, it's pretty um, cheap game to find, and its predecessor was called McMulty, I think, don't test me on that one but yes this one I've had a blast with it's an older game and it's just nice to sit back and just enjoy the the, the theme of the game now multiplayer I would certainly play over solo if I can but it just generally takes a little bit longer and it's it's more methodical and, and, and monotonous you know you're buying this then you're selling that and then you're getting a bit of oil and you're turning it into to gasoline to sell at the market to get more money so it's it's definitely more uh, money in, in involved which is nice so you know I can play this under an hour so if you are interested in this game you know message me I've got my email over on the the summary page and all comments and I can send you you know details on how I manipulate the rules on this one and the next big game is Ark and Nova Marine Worlds and, and the base game itself. So I've had a lot of fun with this solo uh, the last month. I had the expansion for Christmas and I must have played it about 12 to 15 times already, which is crazy. It's only, you know, the end of January already. Now, I've played the base game a lot in the past. I really enjoy this one. So to add more was fantastic. Now, it's surprising, actually, that this didn't just add marine animals and more cards. It was almost like a patch a fix on the old game which didn't really need a fix but there's definitely certain cards which uh, were better balanced from this you know they're taken out I was like oh yeah but that actually makes sense you know certain uh, you know, appeal or victory points you can now attain is, is more achievable so I like that they've added new components in as well which are fantastic and the Marine World's actual addition of cards and marine animals is, is lovely, folks. You know, they really add a nice aspect to the game, something different to think about. Now, I hear a lot of criticism about the flow of the cards and how, you know, sometimes you just don't see these marine animals. And that can be the case in one or two games. You know, the odd marine animal came out. But most of my games, I've actually had a lot of engagement with these marine animals and they, they flow through. And I love how the, the reef symbols can build up and you get triggered them to get more benefits and each of these cards when they do come out they have a little wave symbol which pushes through the deck a little bit quicker which is a nice uh, touch and some of the abilities the sharks typically i think it's hunting where you can within your training range get half the admissions for cards that are out there so fantastic stuff this one and it's a game that's so molded to the base game now i just couldn't ever play this game without it, it just had so much so many uh, extra additions and and you know nice animals and creatures to play with and again i'm hoping to bring this to you guys on the channel soon so i can talk through all the intricacies of it whether it's something that you need to bolt on which i definitely think is a must okay then so before I move on to a few other games that I've played, a big shout out here to uh, Frederick for supporting the channel. Thank you very much. And your recommendation for Mortoma for Food Chain uh, Magna. You've changed my life. And also a shout out to Matt, one of my new uh, patrons there. Much appreciated. So what else have I been playing then? So some games. Cuba if you've ever heard of it. It's an older game. It's from 2007. Now, this is from the days of your sort of Pillars of the Earth, if you've heard or played that one. You're talking a beautiful, exquisite artwork, but very basic mechanics. But there's a lovely a twist in this one. Now, essentially, I'll, I'll talk about the twist momentarily. You are trying to produce a host of goods from your player board here, and there's, there's your typical Cuban cigars, there's rum, and there's loads of other uh, juicy things. Now, you're trying to get these onto these ships to make the most of victory points and in turn you'll be building uh, buildings onto your player board but when you build buildings they can give you special abilities when triggered but they're also blocking up other production and resources on that board so a fascinating deliberation over where am I going to put this what rows and columns am I going to trigger with those workers and that aspect of trying to store them in your warehouse before they get uh, discarded and you've got these character cards 
Now the carrot cards are all powerful, so I'm letting you go to the market to buy, to sell, or you just want to get a good that you really need. You go into architects to go buildings and, and places on your board with victory points at the end. Nothing mind blowing, but it all just works really well together. And when you get to your fourth card, that you have five cards, the fourth card you play, they all have a voting strength. So the mayor is the strongest at five. And depending on what strength your card is at number four versus your opponent will determine who is the starting player at the next round, which I absolutely love that sort of deduction and second guessing of what your opponent is going to play because you can see what cards they're playing first, second, third. And then like, okay, I've seen you play the fifth card, the fourth card, uh, well, the strength five and strength four. I can now just happily play a number four on the fourth card and I know I'm going to get the highest voting. Potentially, because then once you've played your fifth card, you are going to determine who has got the most votes and you actually get to reveal some money in your hand if you want to and that gives you the power to get more votes. And these votes are massive because it gives you political sway over new legislation and the taxation and you can determine what products are needed to be provided to attain victory points. So a real nice element to the game this as to figuring out which characters you really want to use and the mayor is the strongest for voting but equally he lets you export those goods on the ships for VPs. Now, a lovely game. I played it two players. I definitely think this is more like a three, maybe four player a game. It doesn't blow you away, but just does a lot of things nicely. Now, I also tried, if I can pronounce it, the El Presidente expansion, which was good. It adds more characters. There's a donkey in there, and it gives you more flexibility and variety over the workers. But it took away that whole starting player crunchiness to, for me in terms of you now just go and get a character card that gives you starting player. Whereas previously you had to deduce what your opponent was going to play on the fourth card and that's gone. So for me, you know, I like the variety it adds. It brings new flavour into the game. But I think I can just get away with the base game on this one. So yeah, overall, a really solid game, Cuba. Next then, I literally played this yesterday. Not a full game, admittedly. It was called Distill, which is just behind me as well. What a super game, this one. I heard a lot of buzz about it. I had to give it a try. I love those sort of viticulture-type games, vino, so you, you know, all that production of wine. And in this case, it's a spirit. So the game was... It's not the heaviest game, but there's a bit of a learning curve trying to establish the order of what you do when and how you attain these ingredients on the market, what you can attain, the limits to that, how you put them in the, the, the side here with the oh, the grain, was it, in the water and the sugars, and then you add the alcohol and then you're taking the top card and the bottom card, and then you're distilling and you're, you're getting your bonus for which spirit and ingredients, and then you're selling it, you're adding your crates, before then and then your bottle so there's a lot of process to learn but after two three rounds it kind of clicked and made sense and then you're trying to age things and get these flavor cards and then get more points from round to round as they get stronger so loads of things to like in it just really feels satisfying as you are you know developing these spirits and hitting certain things before your opponents and trying trying to achieve these these targets so we didn't quite finish the game but definitely next week we're going to give this one another go a full play and again i'm looking to bring this to you guys on the channel as well but lots to like it and those character abilities wow i had a lady who allowed me to take free market cards which was fantastic and those upgrades as well there's so many you know things you want to go and attain to give you more efficiencies from round to round but you've only got seven rounds and you need to be making those spirits so and money is so tight i could talk about this game all day but yeah my play so far super game looking forward to giving that another a go okay videos i have released and upcoming then so pretty much talked about videos i'll be bringing up but what do we have this month then so terra futura was the latest to the channel what a fabulous game it's a shame it's kind of underrated and it's under the radar in the hobby but if you're after something that's kind of like a filler game 20 minutes 30 minutes very economic in terms of your building this economy cube pusher turning cubes into you know better produce to then make synergies and more victory points this is a must now i always finish a game and i'm like i need more i want more cards more variety i enjoy the little world it's made and how things you know synergize amongst the players but a really fabulous game this one 2021 it was a big one of my most anticipated essen games there and i'm glad you know, I've still got it and it just works for those certain moments. But definitely it'd be nice to have, you know, a 9 by 9 grid and, and more uh, variety going on.
on. So yeah, I've got a run through coming out for that soon. We also had the top 10 anticipated games. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. And I'm looking to bring, hopefully, a top 10 2023 type video. You know, I played a lot of games for 2023. Maybe not enough to warrant an actual only 2023 games. It'll probably be new to me games, bringing a few older ones that I've really enjoyed to highlight to you, you know, what is out there and what's new and hot and, and, and worth keeping an eye on. Uh, and most of these games, they kind of get released at Essen and it takes, you know, six months before they start filtering out into retail. What else? Shipyard, I uh, featured that recently on the channel. There's super game, loads going on there. If you like rondels, go and check uh, that video out. I've got a run through and an over. Overview. and it's based on the old one it definitely makes a lot of improvements on this version lots to like there and it's a slow methodical game but the theme's nice and it's very you know euro economic type-esque and what else have we got so i'm looking at bringing you first hopefully a food chain magnate solo playthrough so let me know if you're excited to see uh, that one and the arc nova marine worlds i'll dive into that a little bit and um, QE is another one. I've hopefully got a video lined up for that as well soon. And another uh, fantastic game there. Okay, what have we got next? So, finally then, something I stumbled across on Board Game Geek. And I absolutely love this game. I've had a lot more fun with it recently. And it was terraforming Mars. Now, what have I spotted then? I've seen these fan-made player boards. Superb. Look at them. Amazing. I do not know where the high image resolutions are but on the geek if you go to forward mars look for these player boards you will see them but they bring together you know the colonies expansion you can see here you've just got different variety on the boards and the functionality of, of where the the terraforming aspects are and i've had a lot of fun with this recently folks adding the colonies expansion i'll i'll admittedly say i haven't tried all the expansions but i'm just having so much fun diving into this and enjoying the synergy of the cards and exploring different strategies to to, to employ i played a bunch of this solo back in the day when it came out and i'm, I'm enjoying now more three four player uh, games of this so really Really solid game and yeah check out his boards if you do manage to print these off let me know because uh, I would definitely want to get a few of these out so there we are folks hopefully today you know if you guys are looking for more economic goodness we can uh, give you this each month I know that most of the time I'm either, I've got my head deep in rules and I'm making videos so it's really nice to sort of engage with you guys and just splurge and blur about what is in my mind and hopefully as I say bring this to live stream in the future and if you do have any questions let me know I'll hopefully answer them in the next month's video okay thanks for watching bye for now